Somebody requested that I go over how I like to use the DaVinci Eye app for figure sculpting. So that's what we're gonna be going over in this video. The DaVinci Eye app is an application that allows you to overlay a reference image with the camera of your phone. Okay, let's get into the app. So in the app, you have um, today's inspiration. On the home page, you have the learn tab where you can find lessons and you can browse categories of things that you might want to draw. You have your projects and your profile where you can share things that you've created on the DaVinci Eye app. And then you have your feed where you can see what other people have created using this app with the assistance of this app. That's the basic format. The settings that I like to use when using this for Sculptor, I go to the draw button that's in the top right hand corner. And then I'll go down and select the reference image that I wanna use from my photos. And then it gives you the option to use AR mode or classic mode. I use classic mode. And then you can see it puts the photo and overlays that with the camera of your phone. In the lower left hand corner, you have the move button. When you click on that, you can move just the picture so I can adjust. Let's say I want a little bit more space, so I'll shrink this a little bit. You can also adjust the camera, and then you can also adjust the grid if you have the grid selected. In the bottom middle, there's the hide button, and that hides all of the information so that you can see more of the reference image and the camera. And then to go back to see those options, you just push this I in the upper left-hand corner. On the bottom right, there's the opacity control where you can change how opaque the image is. You can also toggle it on or off if you want to remove the reference image. And then in the upper right hand corner, you have the tools, camera, and pause the image. And so it pauses the reference image of the camera so that as you're moving around, it doesn't change what you're looking at. So if I wanted to do that, I would just hit the pause button and then that freezes the frame of your camera. You can also control the focus right here of your camera. On the next setting, we have strobe. And what this does, if you turn it on, it just causes the reference image to fade in and out. And you can change the speed of that to make it as fast or as slow as you want. Then you can add a grid to the entire scene on top of the reference. You can change the opacity of the grid and you can change the color of the grid as well. You have torch, which just turns the light on your camera on or off and you can control the brightness of your camera. So if you need the light on, you can just turn that light on and off. And then it, there's also some filters that you can do if you want it to be more saturated, uh, color enhance, exposure. So let's say you wanted a negative, so you can turn it into a negative. Sometimes that might be more helpful. Like for me, I usually sculpt with a black background. Having the photo, if there's a white background, having it be a negative might make it a little bit easier for me to see what's going on. And then in the breakdown mode, this one's uh, interesting because it basically cuts your photo up into the basic um, elements of the photo. And so this can be helpful if you just wanna see the outline of your sculpture and it's hard for you to simplify. So one of the things that I talk about when sculpting is that it's good to pay attention to the outline and not get so distracted by the internal information. So this filter, the breakdown filter, basically does that for you. So you can choose how many colors or how many shades you want in the photo and then it just breaks it down for you and removes a lot of that information. So if I go down to just two, then it's just a silhouette. And for this particular reference photo, that works pretty well in getting a idea of the outline of the figure. And then I can compare that outline with the outline of my sculpture. Really helpful. And then you can also record the project as you're working. If you go out of the project and you want to get back in, you can just go down and then there's all of the projects that you've done, all of the um, times that you've used this with different images. Usually what I'll do is I'll just change the opacity, I'll change the, uh, I'll move things around either with the picture or with the camera to make sure that everything's aligned and that the perspective is the same. Now let me go ahead and I'll back this sculpture up and try to align things correctly. Back this up. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the move and then I'll move the picture and I'll zoom out a little bit. I'll go to the camera and zoom in a little bit. And here I'm able to 
move things around to try to align the sculpture with the reference. And things to keep in mind as you're doing this is if the sculpture is slightly turned, so if I move to this side or over here, then it won't align perfectly and the visual information that I'm getting is going to be uh, false information. So I might think that something is off because it looks off, but maybe the problem is that I'm at a different angle from the perspective that the reference photo was taken from. Another issue is if the perspective is different, so if I'm too close, that changes the perspective that the camera uses and it changes the focal length. And so that means that it distorts things. So when part of the figure is closer to the camera, then it distorts the size of things. And so, and then if, you know, as you can see, my hand back here looks smaller, over here looks bigger. And so things that are closer to the camera appear larger. So what that means is basically the closer you are to the sculpture, the more distortion there's going to be, the farther you are away, the less distortion there's going to be. But sometimes you don't know exactly how much distortion is in the photo reference itself. And so you want to do the best that you can of trying to back away from the sculpture and have about the same perspective looking at the sculpture as the reference photo was taken from. Another issue that you could run into is if the camera is too high up or too low, low to the ground. And so that's why I recommend if you're taking the reference photos yourself, back away from the person and then take the photo at about, at about the center line of the person. So about belly button height or so from that perspective and backed away from the person so that there's not so much distortion. And then when you're overlaying the sculpture and the reference image, you do the same thing. You come to about the mid part of the sculpture and you align it with the reference. Now I can see that this is a little bit off, but depending on how accurate I want the sculpture to be, a little bit of a discrepancy is not a big deal. Usually I'll use this app a couple times in the sculpting process, maybe from the front view and from the side view are angles that I'll usually double check. And I'll do this early on in the process because if anything is way off with the heights or with the pose itself or with the proportions of the body, I want to make those changes early on so that I don't go halfway through the sculpting process and then find out that the legs are way too short or that the pose is not twisting enough. I'll usually check it a couple times using the DaVinci Eye app and then I'll try to do most of the sculpting without constantly going back to this app. And the reason for that is I want to use this app as a tool to get better and to, to train my eye to see better and more accurately. I don't want to use it as a crutch where I go from every angle and then try to adjust every piece of clay so that the outline of the sculpture is exactly the same as the outline of the reference and then switch the angle slightly and do the same thing. You can do that, but that's not how I prefer to work. I like to use it just as a tool to make sure that I'm seeing things accurately. This is an application that you have to purchase, but for me as a sculptor, it's worth it. I use it all the time. There are other ways to create a similar effect. You can take pictures of your sculpture and then take your reference image and overlay them in, there's many free applications that'll do this or Photoshop or something like that, and then change the opacity of the image that's in front so that you can see through the image and get a similar effect. But with the DaVinci Eye app, it's just so much faster and you're able to, in real time, adjust the position of the camera looking through the reference photo so that you can align it better with the sculpture and make sure that you have it exactly aligned and that the perspective is accurate as you're comparing the reference and the sculpture. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to use this app. And if it's an app that you get, I hope that you'll find it worthwhile. I really like it and I use it all the time. If you do a lot of sculpting, figure sculpting, then I definitely think it's a worthwhile app to consider. If you're interested in sculpting, I definitely recommend checking out the Proco Figure Sculpting Fundamentals course. In that course, I go over everything that I wish I knew when I started figure sculpting. And so it's a great resource for anybody that wants to improve their ability to sculpt the human body. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you'd like to see me cover any other topics, you can leave a comment down below. Stay creative, stay productive. I'll see you in the next video.